I'll tell you how that squirt nuke Irma. He's the one who let her die. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Fall of Porcupine. Um, I'm still kind of upset of what, what we had to deal with with Irma in the last episode. Uh, <laughs> even now, after I kind of given myself a little break from the game, I am... I'm still a little bummed out from it. It, it brought up my own kind of... <laughs> Uh, my own truths that I will have to face. Not, hopefully not in time soon, but in the future. Anyway, let's turn this fan on. Get some cool air in this room, even though it's cold outside. <laughs> and, oh, it's my hat. Hmm. Oh, that's it? That's all you have to say? Okay. <laughs> I will, oh, hey, we got winter clothes and a new jacket. Very nice. All right. New episode. New... New emotions, okay? And no more of the sadness. We just... We gotta push on through. Let's go. Hey, Alfeo. What do you do? Why are you still out here? It's cold. Wow. Looks like someone got out the wrong side of the bed this morning. What happened? Didn't you enjoy the hibernation festival? Things aren't so great right now, Alfeo. Can I help you? No. <sighs> well, I guess that's. I guess he's just gonna be depressed this day. I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, for me, I had time to step away and try to process my feelings. But for him, it's literally the morning after. Oh, someone made a little snowman. That's cute. It looks like a bird as well. All right, let's. This guy should be down here fishing as well. Yep, <laughs> and still in the same clothes too. Finley! Hello. You don't look so good. If I didn't know better, I'd say you were in a river bursting into banks. You could say that. How are things with your sister? I told her about your stream of consciousness idea. Two twigs clinging together to the stem current. We cried for a full hour. Oh, that's a good thing, I hope. It is. Soon the river students will become the, its master, right, Finley? You mean me? Not yet, but soon. Perhaps. Wow. Next, I'll teach you how to choose the right camping chair. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> oh, that's, okay. Oh, I guess that's all he has to say to us? No, there's gotta be more in the future, I'm sure. All right, well, I guess we got no choice, you know. Even though Irma's gone, we still have- we're still here. We still have a life to live. And... That's basically it, I mean... <laughs> how sad is that? To... To know that someone's world is gone, but yours continues. Hmm. I guess we're not gonna take the bike. He did say once winter came around, he'd take it. But, I guess he's not in the mood for it. I should probably visit Giuliano. I wonder if he's there. I mean, he might be gone. Giuliano, I... I'm really sorry that... Irma was... No, I can't do that yet. I know he wants to talk with him. I mean, we were there for her final moments. I don't want to talk to you today, Nino. Not today. <sighs> I sense a dark cloud over you, young one. What are you, a Jedi? <laughs> You had a death on your ward, right? It's never pretty, that's for sure. But the river of life flows on regardless. Let it carry you. We'll all get swept into the great sea of eternity one day. Yeah. But that still doesn't make it any easier. Morning. Have a nice weekend. Why the gloomy face? Morning, Ingrid. I'm not in a great mood. This because of Ms. Dakama? 
I'm sorry, kid. Really. I like the old lady, too. I was hoping I'd feel better after the weekend. Oh, so we already had like a whole weekend to do process. Well, I guess you're just one of those people who feels a lot for others. Just make sure it doesn't become a problem for you. That's a part of our profession, kid. Try to focus. There's enough living people around here who need your help. I get it, though. They always say that first death really sticks with you. Yeah, maybe you're right. I'll focus and try to my best. That's the spirit. I mean, he's got no choice, really. As a doctor, he, he needs to, you know, get his act together. Even if he doesn't feel like it. Hey, Mia. Finley. I heard the news this morning. Do you want to talk? Maybe grab a coffee or something? No. I want to get my work done first. Okay. If you want to talk later, just come and find me, okay? I will do, Mia. She's really sweet. Good morning, Finley. How are you? Depressed? Sad? Alright, I think. A patient died yesterday. Your patient. Wait, why is everyone saying the weekend then if it was literally just yesterday then? What the hell? <laughs> I imagine Irma's death is still in your mind. Nevertheless, I would ask that you don't let your performance levels drop. We can't let these things affect our work. Got it. You can rely on me. You know the drill. We'll talk again once you finish treating your patients. Try to make this a good day, Finley, in spite of everything. Good luck. Oh, one more thing. Irma died of complications from pneumonia. She was old. Her immune system just couldn't hold everything off. She remained stable for a while. However, her condition worsened during her stay here. These things happen sometimes. The incident with the water damage in her room probably didn't help either. What I'm trying to say is... You did nothing wrong. I even made a note to that effect in my report. I assigned you to treat Irma, and that was the right decision. I'm sure of it. Oh, She's trying to be nice. <laughs> I mean, not trying. She is nice. Okay. Why did I get that? Again. Okay, come on. Finya. Finley, I heard about Irma. I'm so sorry. Hope you're okay. I'll be making her memorial figurine today. Gotta make sure it's a good one. Come by anytime if you need to talk, okay? Yep, that sounds like a plan. Alright. Oh, right. I gotta get my... Ugh, I'm already getting distracted. <laughs> I, I'm still a doctor. I, I gotta be present. I can't... I can't let what happened past affect my work right now. It looks like we got ourselves a younger owl. <laughs> And then we gotta deal with the, uh, old cr crampy one. You're Emma, right? Okay. Miss Emma's strawberry yogurt, right? No. I'm Emma Smith. Oh, right. That's what it says here. I must have read it wrong. How are you feeling, Emma Smith? I miss my home. And I've got tummy ache, too. You did get some pills, didn't you? But it's still not better yet. No. Alright, let's take a closer look at what's up with your tummy then. Okay, so... I'm gonna go with... Okay. <laughs> Another close call right there. But just at the last minute, we managed to get that A. I think your pain is because of your food allergy. I read that you're not allowed to eat certain things. Is that right? Yes. So, are you watching what you eat then? Yeah, but... What is it, Emma? Well, Gerda said that after the hibernation festival, you can eat as many nuts as you want. Is Gerda your mom? No, my mom's name is Mom and she's away. So who's Gerda then? Gerda needs dork. I always visit her when I'm homesick. She's a doctor like you. Wait a minute. Do you mean Dr. Nest Nestorf? Yeah. Can you do me a favor, Emma? Okay. 
Please don't eat any more nuts. I'm sorry, but your tummy doesn't like nuts. Not even after the hibernation festival. Oh. It's mean, I know. But your tummy aches are mean too, aren't they? Yes. So you keep off the nuts, and we'll think of some nice things for you and your tummy to eat, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, so she's related to the doctor, the other owl doctor. Now, here's a question, though. Why in the world would he allow her to eat the nuts? Does he not know that she's allergic? That's kind of weird. Maybe no one told her. <laughs> but, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I'm confused. Good morning, Mrs. Van Galen. Is it that time already? Your col colleague said you'd be checking on me again today. Well, looks like she was right. Shall we get straight to it? I'm sure you want to go back home, too. Uh, I forgot. Oh, we're doing the pills. Okay. Alright, looks like we're good. Yep. I'm seeing a significant improvement. You know what? I'm actually feeling a lot better today. Better than I have in years. Well, yeah, you're not working. <laughs> Duh. I feel like I'm really aware of my surroundings again. Sounds like the medication is doing its job. And probably the meditations. Yes. But I think there's more to it than that. I managed to talk to Dr. Gutierrez again. And it was... Like he tore down a wall inside me. Suddenly, I saw everything I used to think was important in a different light. I've decided to change my life around completely. I don't want to end up here again. I want to be able to focus on other things, instead of just living for my job. I called my boss this morning and requested four weeks off. Hey! Wow, you can actually request four weeks? Damn, I could barely get two. <laughs> That's great. That's not what she thought. She threatened to fire me on the spot. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, don't be. I am the island. I am the sea. And maybe unemployed, but I don't care at all, and that's great. I'll do my exercises and follow my heart more. Thank you for your helping me. I'll make sure to thank Dr. Guterra again before I leave too. Have a great day and look after yourself. All right, well, that's good. I'm, I mean, it's not good that she's unemployed, but as long as she's happy, I think she'll be okay. She sounds like she was a very hard worker. And I mean, seriously, she needs, she's in the hospital. What, what else are, are her employees supposed to think, huh? If she kept going, they're gonna, you know, she's probably gonna fall down and, you know, have another attack. Maybe even worse, you know? And then it's gonna be on them. But I guess that's, that's what they like to do. You know, push people until they just can't work no more. One way or another. Now, my dear colleague, what's your assessment of your health status? My withdrawal symptoms are diminishing, and so is the pain. Good. Do you mind if I examine you? That's what I'm here for. <laughs> are we doing that little heart thing again? Yes, we are. Damn it. Oh, wait. Nope. Other one. I haven't done this in a while. I'm pressing this. Oh, it's a new set sequence. That's what it is. Damn it. Uh, it's been a minute since I've done that one. <laughs> like since episode one, I believe, is when I uh when I last did it. We're gonna keep increasing your vitamin B1 and energy intake. Your liver's on the mend. Are you sure? Nonsense, my liver's had it. The readings are clear. See? We told you! Really? You came to us just in time. Feel free to take a look for yourself. We'll have to keep you here for a few more days for observation. If you want to keep on living, you need to keep off the alcohol. Forever. <laughs> Clear, honest words. I like it. Maybe something will come of you after all, in the distant, far off future. But what do I do? Or don't do is none of your business, understand? <laughs> I've given you my medical opinion. What you do with it is entirely up to you. Well, he's still stubborn. 
Or is it a she? I can't tell. It's a little... <laughs> I'm not an owl, so, you know, it's not like I can tell right off the bat if, if it's a male or female. <laughs> but they're just cute little animals on a bed. Alright, there's the Krakowski. I'm all done. All done? That's what I just said. Yep. It took you longer than usual today. But given the circumstances, I'm willing to turn a blind eye to that. Let's see. Eh, it didn't do too great. Hey, I still get an A. Awesome. <laughs> what have you got for me today? I don't have anything for you. Dr. Theobald was asking after you. Oh, really? Why? I couldn't say. However, he did ask if I could give you the rest of the day off. I'm not happy about it, but I said yes. I guess it must be something important then. Do you think I should go to his office? You can if you like, but you won't find him there. How do you know? Because he's just made himself comfortable in our break room. Oh, strange. That's just the way he is. I guess I'll pop in and see him then. As you wish. Okay, well then. <laughs> I wasn't expecting uh, our boss to literally be in our own break room. That's kind of weird, right? I mean, unless he's there for the coffee, but to make himself comfortable, that's another thing. It's definitely weird to see him out of his own office. Or the cafeteria. <laughs> oh wait, he was in the cafeteria. Never mind, scratch that. Finley, there you are. Thank you for coming. Sure, Dr. Theobald. What can I do for you? Nothing, nothing. But I wanted to talk to you. First of all, I would like to thank you. You've done an excellent job these past few days. Thanks. Is that all you wanted? No, not at all. I heard about Irma the Kama's passing, of course. A tragedy, truly. Like so many others here in Porcupine, I knew Irma well and liked her a lot. I'll miss her very much, the whole town will. But you were the one who looked after her and were there for her in her final days. Is Irma the first patient who's died under your care? Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. It's not uncommon to struggle getting your, getting your them off your mind the first time. I still remember my first time, too. I think I know what you mean. I still think about Mrs. Dekama a lot. Well, I mean, it did happen last night, so... Just try not to let those thoughts affect you too much. After all, there are still plenty of other people depending on your help. Don't get distracted from looking out for them. It's Hermos funeral service this afternoon. It will be held at Gilbert's. Oh, that's probably why he asked. He requested to have the rest of the day off for me. Giuliano's hosts most of the funerals in this town. I'm sure this won't be especially hard for him. You should be there. You'll feel better afterward, believe me. You mean, I can go to the service? You are excused for the rest of the day. And I'm sure Mrs. Dakama would have invited you anyway. Okay then, I'll be there. Thank you, Dr. Theobald. No need to thank me, Finley. Say goodbye to the old lady for me. He really is sweet. I like him. Wait, there was more to say. See you again tomorrow. Give my regards to your old Irma, right? And please give my condolences to Giuliano as well. Okay. Had to make sure we uh, exhausted all this dialogue. They don't want to leave without <laughs> knowing what else he needed from me. Take care, kiddo. And don't slip on the snow. I already pulled something in my back this morning. <laughs> oh, Ingrid. Oh. I'm not hungry. Okay, never mind. Off we go. Oh, damn, it's already dark? You're open right now? I interest you in a hot cup of coffee. Perhaps a tea or a saffron roll? No thanks. Sorry, I've got somewhere to be. Sure thing. Damn, we just keep rejecting them. <laughs> I feel bad for the guy. Oh, hey. You're here. So you're here too, young one. It's good to see you. The roller coaster of life never stops, does it? A few days ago, we gathered to celebrate. Today, we've gathered to weep. 
Hey. Finley. Hey, Giuliano. I'm so sorry. I wish I had more. Finley. It's okay. Thank you for coming. I know we haven't known each other long, but it means a lot to me. Please, make yourself at home. There's food and drink. Go ahead, take a seat. Just... Just make yourself at home. Is there really nothing I can do for you? Come to think of it, there is one thing actually. Anything you want, what is it? I think there's a colleague of yours here, too. He didn't hang around long. He just stood in the corner and didn't talk to anyone. Then I think he went out the back door. I haven't seen him since. Could you go see if he's still there? I checked myself, but I've got my hands full. Sorry, here I am asking for your help again. It's no problem, Giuliano. I'd be happy to do that for you. Thank you. Wait, who is it? I'm sure, I'm sure Pina made the figurine. Aw, such a nice tradition. I'm proud of you, Pina. Ah. Uh, he's a man of small words, that's for sure. <laughs> Did you know Irma? Of course. I love stopping to chat to her during my rounds. She was always sitting at her window with a plate of cookies next to her. She always made me coffee on cold days. I love one of her coffees right now. Yeah, that sounds nice. Irma. I can't believe she just died like that. It's so unfair. Yeah, I know what you mean. Wow, you're here! Sorry, Finley. I know how much you liked Irma. How are you feeling? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just happy I could be here today. Me too. Even if it has been a stressful, a bit stressful for me. But I'd do anything for Irma. If there's anything I can do for you, just say okay. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, I can finally talk to you? Hey, Finley. Ted, you're here too. Wait. Did we miss him? I don't... I, I definitely don't recall ever meeting him. So how the hell do we know him? I must have skipped something. Of course. I've really fallen in love with this little bar. I didn't know where there was a funeral today. And I didn't know the deceased at all. But I'd still like to be here for the wake. I'm sure Giuliano will be glad to see you. I hope so. Yeah, see? Right here. First entry. Ted is new in town as well. She doesn't have a place to stay yet, so she moved into the motel room at Gilbert's. She could probably just stay there for a while. The place isn't that expensive and never gets booked bunch anyway. Speaking of which, she's working on a book right now. I wonder how that will turn out. Maybe I had to come to in here. Oh. It's you. I definitely wasn't. I thought it was. I thought it was gonna be Carl. Gregor, you're here too. Get lost, kid. Don't you want to come inside? The service is about to start. No. There's food and drink too. Lots of people here. Leave me alone. Okay. Yeah. It's all my fault. Hey, the pies weren't you, man. What do you mean? I'm doing the best I can. I know the hospital relies on me. I'm the one who's supposed to look after it, after all. If the old lady hadn't got sicker. If that water damage hadn't happened. If I had just taken better care of the hospital. Then maybe she wouldn't have... This is my burden to bear. I'll never forgive myself. All those people in there. I see the way they look at me. They know it's my fault. It's not your fault. I felt the same way. I was the one cheating her right up until the end. I still believed she'd get better. I didn't want to face the fact that she was going to die. But in the moment she passed, I knew she was at peace with it. She was old, her body was weak, and she was happy. 
She didn't want people looking after her all the time. And that's okay. I did my best, and you did too. But sometimes, things crumble and collapse anyway. Sometimes, we have to say goodbye to people. Sometimes we can't help them. I'm going in now. You can come with me if you want. I can't. I'm gonna stay here. Okay. But if you change your mind, just know that you'll be welcome. Sure, whatever. I should go. I don't want to disturb the, bere the bereaved. You should do what feels right for you. No one's forcing you to stay. Yeah, you're right. Let's go in. If we go in at the same time, they won't all be staring at me. And I could slip away quickly if I need to. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be rough on him too. I mean, I can understand, but really it's not his fault. Things just happen. The hospital's old. What? Were you hiding? I wonder what his take is it is on all this. He better not cause a scene here. I I swear. <laughs> so, did you find him? Yes, he's a janitor at the hospital. But he doesn't want to come in. I think he needs some time to himself. He's like literally right there. He's sneaking off. <laughs> I think we all do. I'm glad he's here, though. Speaking of which, how are you holding up? I'm coping, but please let me know if there's anything I can do. I will, my friend. Please sit down. It's about to start. Dear guest, could I have your attention for a moment? Thank you all for coming. I can barely bring myself to speak, but last night Irma, my dear mother, passed away. She's, she was a real talker, always telling stories, and she was surrounded by people who loved her. That's you guys. Thanks for that, all of you. When, when I was little, she taught me to play an instrument. She practiced with me. And I hated every second of it. <laughs> but, but when I was playing, her eyes would just light up. I wish you could look at me that way again. I want to play a very special song for you. A song Irma requested every time I picked that instrument up. There's a die right there, hanging on the shelf. <laughs> I remember one day, it was really frosty when I had to deliver my letters. I slept on a patch of ice. A whole mill bag fell into the river with all the letters still inside it. And I tore my cruise ship ligament. Grandma not only helped me fish every single letter out of the river, she even dried them, restored them, and delivered them for me. Irma worked with my parents in a restaurant. Things have been going downhill for a while. Then Irma came up with a new dish. Rainbow beet gratin. It was a hit. Before long, it was the only dish anyone wanted. Irma and I used to play backgammon together every Thursday in the summer. How did you know Irma, Finley? I... um... 
I'll tell you how that squirt nuke Irma. He's the one who let her die. Ah, damn it, you're gonna start it? Seriously, man? It's the truth. Irma was in great shape. Then one day she just bends over, sprains an ankle, ends up in the hospital, and a few days later, suddenly she's sick. Real sick. And then she just dies. I'm telling you, it's all that guy's fault. Him and all the staff at that awful hospital. I just heard them talking about it right now. They're letting the hospital deteriorate. It's so bad the folks who go there pick up new diseases in the wards. Emma didn't even have pneumonia until they took her to that dump. I'm telling you, Emma didn't just die. She was murdered there. If St. Ursula's wasn't so useless, Irma would still be with us today. We'd be celebrating, not mourning. Everyone who works there should stand up and take the blame for this. We'd all be better off if the hospital was torn down and never darkened our skyline again. Ralph, that's a crock of nonsense. <sighs> this guy. Nah, hold on. Maybe he's got a point. Yeah, seeing Ursula's is a danger to us all. That's right. We need to run these murderers out of town. Maybe it would be better that way. Look around you. Do you, do you see anyone from the hospital here except for this clown? Exactly. They don't even have the nerve to come to her funeral. Because they know it's their fault, plain as the nose on your face. But... Quiet, everyone. Please. This isn't about pointing the finger at anyone. This isn't about St. Ursula's. It's about Irma, my mother, your friend. Finley? Y yeah? I'm sorry to have to ask you this, but perhaps it would be best if you leave. But, please, I don't want this argument to ruin Irma's memorial. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Let's talk later. Okay. Damn you, Ralph. Oh, that Ralph, he pisses me off, I swear. I mean, I get it. I get it where he's coming from. He did lose his wife, and that's his motive. But come on, man. It's not like everyone's trying to get you, okay? You're just... You're just a crappy person. <laughs> oh, man. That didn't go how I expected. Looks like my cell phone had no reception at Gilbert's. Me and Carl both tried to call me. Uh... We'll call Mia. Hey, Finley. Thanks for calling me back. I was worried when I saw you today. Are you okay? I'd be lying if I said I was. Oh? I, um... I don't know if it'll help, but I actually have plans for tonight. I think I need to get my mind off things, and I'm guessing you might want to as well. If you come along, we could help each other. Pina will be there too. Sure, why not? Cool. I just got off work. I'm staying in the middle of the town square. Perfect. I'm heading your way now. Let's meet at the hospital entrance, okay? Alright. See you soon. Okay, well. Uh, and once again, Ralph! I, I swear to God, if I could, I would clock him. But, I know he's a doctor. He's... And unfortunately, anything that he does reflects on St. Ursula's. That's, that's a tough situation to be. Again, it's... Things happen. Come on, Ralph! All right, Mia. Where are we going? Is the funeral over already? Dr. Kukowski told me you were there. Sure was. There was an argument. People said it was my fault Irma died. What? I wanted to explain myself, but didn't get a chance. That's so mean. It makes me so angry. Yeah. Can we change the subject, maybe? Anything special going on in your life? Well... Today's my stage debut. What do you mean? I'm rehearsing with the Porcupine Amateur Dramatics Group for the first time. Want to come watch? I want to get used to having an audience. Do I need to do anything? Watch, listen, nod. And don't be, and don't be too harsh a critic. <laughs> I can do that. Yay! Alright, let's go. The rehearsal is taking place on the small stage in the park. Oh, so it's going to be this way if I'm correctly. Okay. Well, at least we got something distracted so, from Ralph, because I swear that Ralph really likes to rile people up. He's, he's definitely got a personal vendetta towards the hospital. 
And what's it going to do if the hospital goes down? You know, I have a small inkling suspicion that r something's going to happen to Ralph. And he's going to need to come to the hospital. He's probably going to, you know, bitch and moan about it. But in, in the end, it's, you know, something probably going to happen to change his mind. Or maybe not. Maybe he'll just keep being a stubborn old fool. And just, you know, <laughs> keep causing trouble for everyone. Oh, I see Penis here. And a whole bunch of other people. Mia! I'm so glad you came. And you brought Philly with you too. Yes, I asked some of you wanted to come. But just to watch. Watching? Nonsense. You're just in time. One of our members dropped out today. Caught a flu at the hibernation festival or something. Oh no. Can we still rehearse without him? Sure we can. You brought the perfect replacement. <laughs> but... Oh yes, Finley, please say you'll join. I'm sure that's just what I need to feel more comfortable in my first role. I, um... Alright. Yay! <laughs> Woo! I was in theater group in elementary school. <laughs> but I might be a little rusty. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if that was enough experience, you know? <laughs> What's the play? Will it even work with someone new in the role? That's, that's what's so great. We're in an improv troupe. We give everyone a role at the start of the show, then just see what happens. And tonight we've got something very special in store. A terrible crime that needs solving. <laughs> I'm scared already. You're telling me. And you, Finley. Are you, are you going to be our detective? The private eye? The guy who was a little too tough at the police? You're basically the referee. It'll be great practice for the rest of the group. Oh, okay. I hope we can pull this off. I know you can. This is going to be great. Is everyone ready? Yup. I'm already pumped. Heat. <laughs> Let's go. All right. You've all been given a brief on your roles. Any questions? Nope. Good. Folks, we've got two new additions today. So to celebrate, I've come up with something special. Listen up, everyone. Do you know we're wearing jackets? It's still cold out, right? This guy came in a shirt. Two of them, actually. <laughs> we open an old hospital. It's six in the morning. There's a storm outside. The rain's coming down in buckets as one by one you enter the building. Shortly after the shift begins, we hear the chief physician's voice breaking into a horrifying scream. Oh, um... Ah! Uh, come on, you can do better than that. Let me feel your terror! Ah! Uh, <laughs> much better. A body has been found in the chief physician's office. But it's not just any body. It's the body of the chief physician's personal assistant. You gather in the break room. The fresh coffee is still bubbling in the pot when the door flies open once more. Into the room strides none other than the city's most famous detective. Finley, that's your cue. Wait. Oh, there we are. <laughs> You're all guilty, I know it. <laughs> His face is grave. His steps determined. And so the questioning begins. Finley, you just let me know when you're ready to give your verdict, okay? Okay. Alright, folks. Let the interrogation begin. Oh, do I have to literally interrogate each one? You don't understand how awful it was. If it were just the dead body, I wouldn't have been so shocked. I've seen more than a few of them over the course of my career. But in my office? Before my third cup of coffee? <laughs> What's the world coming to? How am I doing, Finley? Am I convincing? You're doing great, but you need the same character. Oh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> <clears throat> I'd like to ask you about the incident. Yes, of course. I think we all want to get to the bottom of this. And as soon as possible, too. Let's see. I, do we... Are we going to get a chance to ask all of them or just one? Is there anything else you'd like to add? I just can't stop wondering why it had to be in my... Why it had to happen in my office. Of all places, and how? The only person with a key besides me. 
was my assistant. And we couldn't stand each other. I don't know what he was doing in my office. As far as I know, he was never in my office unless I was there too. His key was only for emergencies. I'm busy, so keep it short. Very well, I'll be brief. Where were you when the incident happened? I wasn't in the building at the time of the incident. I already left early yesterday evening. I always try to get here as early as possible as a rule. That way, I can finish the day's work early too. Only today, my car broke down, so I didn't arrive until the same time as the rest of the staff. The breakdown service took forever, but maybe that was lucky for me in the end. Otherwise, it could have been me lying here cold on the floor. Horrible. That does rule me out completely as a su suspect, though. I see. Did we already ask these questions? Yeah. Okay, so one more. If you ask me, it was the nurse anyway. My PA made some nursing cuts a few weeks ago. And I've heard nothing but complaints ever since. She also has a penchant for being unprofessionally emotional, if you know what I mean. Okay, well that's it. Please hurry up. Alright, let's see what the others have to say. I'd love to help, but I've been busy all morning. Busy, eh? With what? Sometime last night, that damn pipe in the basement burst again. That's the third time this month. Not that anyone cares. And everything's always underwater. So I spent the whole morning on my hands and knees down there tinkering around. And then I thought, what's that strange object in the water? And hey, Pestro. I had the murder weapon in my hand. Not that I knew that at the time, obviously. Okay, that sounds suspicious. And did you notice anything else? I don't know if this is relevant, but I talked to the guy a lot. Out on the stairs after work, he's the only guy here that smokes apart from me. Two days ago, he was saying some weird stuff. Thought someone was following him, stuff like that. I managed to calm him down, told him he was imagining it. Turns out he wasn't. Alright, thanks for the tip. Maybe the ambulance driver? He was always kind of weird when it came to the PA. So I'm sitting in front of the guy's office again yesterday. Don't know if that helps. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's really terrible what happened. I still can't believe it. I was even here when the crime took place and I still couldn't do anything. Where in the building were you at the time of the crime? I was coming extra early. Because I like to work in peace before the hustle and bustle starts. So I sat in my office all morning. Going through patient records. I haven't been here long. I was eager for a fresh start after my previous hospital. And I get along very well with everyone here. But I'm still trying to get up to speed. Anything unusual? As you may already know, I'm pretty new here. So I probably wouldn't even notice if there was something out of the ordinary. Ah. Uh, but maybe that will help you provide a more objective view to than your colleagues. Yes, I suppose. At the risk of sounding like a phony, I respect her very much and I'm glad to have the opportunity to work under her. I think I can still learn a lot from her. Alright. Uh, what do you think of the janitor? I may at least stay out of his way. Since my boss pointed out her suspicions to me. I know she said to keep an eye on him, but I just always should get the shivers. That must find out the idea of having dealings with a criminal. Okay, so th I guess he has a record. Yes, I'm happy to help if I can. Now right, you're the last one. I, I, I don't know how that could have happened. It was the chief physician. I'm sure of it. You've got to believe me. She would have done anything for him, but she swept that under the table. If he threatened her with it, she wouldn't hesitate to resort to such means. Anything to preserve her career. I did see her leaving the building last night. But I was just starting my night shift, but doesn't mean anything at all. And where were you at the time of the crime? Me? I, I was only here for a cigarette break. I just got back from the night shift. And I was going to go straight home after that. Hmm. You understand? Is there anything else that might have been relevant besides your theories? Well, I don't know if it's really relevant, but before the PA started here, 
He worked at another hospital. But he was falsely accused of involuntary manslaughter, so they fired him. Can you imagine that? That's interesting. I told you, the chief physician, of course. Haven't you ever seen a detective drama? I heard the news when she first started here. But I've never really talked to her. I don't think she liked her PA very much. He's a nice guy. We used to smoke together a lot. Because of our shifts synced up well. They don't sync up so much anymore. But he's pretty reliable and nicer than most of the others. Uh... You physician? She's sneaky, I'm telling you. I think she's so much better than other people. Just because she can boss us all around. I'm surprised she wasn't kicked out years ago. She's just a bad influence on everyone else. Okay, well, no one seems to like the chief physician. Alright. Oh man, I, I need a coffee. Let's go back to Mia. I mean, our chief physician. Let's see. Something about your statement makes me wonder. You told me earlier that you and your PA couldn't stand each other, correct? That's correct. Interesting. Especially as I've heard from various sources that the two of you got along very well. That... That is wild speculation. And anyway, it should have made me even less of a suspect, if anything. True, I lied. But I only did it for the sake of my image. I don't want to be the kind of boss he's known for. For playing favorites, so I treat everyone the same. Wait, what? Yo, what do you think of the janitor? I'll be honest with you. I've always had the suspicion that he was up to something crooked. He's always creeping around everywhere, cropping up where you least expect him. I think he's been stealing, but I don't have any proof. I mean, that would give him... I mean, the whole, uh... Flooding in the basement would be, uh... Would be a good cover-up, if I were you. She hasn't been here long, just a couple months. But she's proven a good fit. I was a little skeptical at first. Because I didn't know if she was assertive enough. But it's worked out fine in the end. She's normally very reliable. Though I did find a stack of uncompleted files on her desk just today. Okay. Ambulance driver? I don't think I've ever talked to him. I don't interact with most of the employees here on a regular basis. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean... You guys kind of keep to your own sections of the hospital, so... Yeah, I understand. Alright, let's talk to you. Well, I don't think my boss would kill anyone. He has a lot of money in a nice apartment. Okay. Why would she ruin all that? Nah, nah. I don't see her doing that. Oh man, I don't even know who to pick. <laughs> Alright, let's talk with you. Do you know how your chief physician felt about her assistant? And where was she today? I don't know what kind of relationship my boss had with the PA, but she always leaves the building at the same time on Mondays. I think it's because she wants to catch the show about doctors and TV. Which is always on at that time. That's what someone told me once, at least. I don't know if she's a suspect, but I think she's a smart woman. I don't think she would have killed anyone in her own office, where she'd be one of the most obvious suspects, but that's just my opinion. She was cursing her head off when she arrived this morning, too, because her car broke down. I saw them towing it away. Okay, so at least we know she was actually having cars just this morning. Yet, I've heard differently. I've been reliably informed that you didn't have a good relationship with the murder victim. I've never tried to hide it. Maybe not everyone knew, but that suited me just fine. Yeah, me and the PA, we clashed pretty often. He didn't always agree with my methods and opinions. And yeah, sometimes that made me angry, but angry enough to kill him? I never do that. No one gets along with every single one of the colleagues, and I'm no exception. That's normal. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you could try to be friendly with someone, but sometimes, you know, there's a certain line where, like, you just don't, you just can't fake it anymore. You just... <laughs> you just straight up show that you do not don't like them. Alright, what do you think of the janitor? I mainly stay out of his way. Okay. I guess that's it. I don't think they got anything else to say for me. What about you? Is there anything new with you? Damn it. I was told you don't smoke anymore. You said you were taking a cigarette break. But you don't smoke anymore, do you? I, I, I'm not a murderer. I would never kill him. No, I don't smoke, but I am allowed to go anywhere in the hospital. Wherever I want, especially to my own brother's office door. You heard it right. He was my brother. 
and I would never hurt my own family. I'd rather kill myself. He may not have wanted to see me, but I can't help it. That he died before he could change his mind. And I know he would have done it if I could have just talked to him again yesterday. Wait, what? Okay, let me let me talk back with Mia's character. Because I feel like she might know about... About the relationship between the two. Damn it, nothing new with her. Damn! Okay, I think I... I'm gonna take a guess, because honestly, I can't... <laughs> uh, going back and forth is kind of giving me a bit of a headache. No, I couldn't stand him. But that doesn't make me a murderer. Oh wait, what? If I went around wanting to murder people, I'd have started actually doing it a long time ago. Not that I'm saying I did. Fact is, he just wasn't a nice guy. Ask the new doctor, she'll tell you. He really had it in for her. That's more of a motivation to kill him than I ever had. Besides, I was on duty in another ward all night. So I couldn't have killed him anyway. Like I said, I was on duty. I don't know exactly what he was killed. But you're welcome to talk to all the patients on the ward. I spent a lot of time there that morning. I had a very long conversation with a woman in room 7. She didn't feel well and she really wanted to talk to somebody about it. Not to mention giving them her whole life story. I remember wondering about the light. The light that was on in the chief physician's office. So that was something in the early morning. No, I didn't see anyone. Or wait. The janitor. I saw the janitor on that floor. He said he was looking for a ladder for some repair work. Unfortunately, I couldn't help him. I had my hands full myself this morning. Because I heard differently. The new doctor. I don't really know anything about her. I wasn't that interested in either. I just overheard. That she and the PA clashed a lot. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that they came here from the same hospital. The name was similar anyway. But whether they knew each other or back then, I have no idea. It's a while since the PA left there. I ran through several times yesterday. She said she wanted to move some files from her office into other offices. Spent all morning carrying boxes around. Hmm. What do you think of the janitor? We get along alright. He's quite a nice guy. Not very talkative, but I think we just both enjoy not having to talk for a change. I also think that the hospital would collapse without him. Alright, you know what? I think I'm gonna... I heard something about that. It's been implied that you might have had a motive after all. Namely, a personal dislike combined with the nursing cuts. I already told you that I didn't like him. But that doesn't mean I killed him. Being temperamental doesn't mean that I'm a murderer. Yeah, he made that nursing service even worse than it already was. And I could have laid it him into him about it. But did I do it? No. Am I sad that he's dead? No. I'm still not a murderer. <laughs> well, at least they're being honest. Damn. Okay, what do you think? Can you reconstruct the course of the events? Yeah, I think so. Oh, fantastic! So, who did it? The case is absolutely clear. There's only one person who could have committed this heinous act. Even though every single one of you had a motive, the solution is crystal clear. I think it was the janitor. I'm gonna go with the janitor. The janitor! Bum, bum, bum! No. But, no, it really wasn't. Does that mean one of us didn't play the role well enough, or is it you that's the problem? I'm a doctor, not a detective. That's probably just as well. It was obviously the new doctor. After all, she was the only one whose alibi was contradicted by anyone. She said she spent all morning working on the files. But the nurse was very clear that she kept running into the doctor in the hallway. So, what was the motive then? Isn't it obvious? The PA and the new doctor used to work at the same hospital. The involuntary manslaughter that got him fired. But which they could never prove was him. That was actually a murder that she committed. And it didn't go down well with her when somebody else got the credit for it. In fact, she took it so badly that she followed him to his new hospital. And when she caught him in the chief physician's office, she seized her opportunity for revenge. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. Seriously, you're doing it for frame? Or well, infamy? Really? Seriously? It's very simple when you think about it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I took my shot and I failed. That's fine. 
All right, I guess those guys have no dialogues. That guy looks like he's playing on his Game Boy. Wow, my hands are still shaking. Now let's get a kick out of acting. I'll be up all night tonight, even without coffee. Though, I'd really pull the wool over your eyes. <laughs> yeah, 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 you got me. All right, well, where's Mia? She should be, oh, here they are. What's this? So, what did you think of the show? The show? Hmm, well... If you can even call all that hammy act in the show, then I'd say it was pretty straightforward. I can't believe you couldn't solve the murder. <laughs> hey, why not? It was tough. That bunch of amateurs made it easy for you. Hey, that's not very nice. Niceness has nothing to do with it. It's an... It's about acting. The only thing that keeps us grounded in this world. Do you have any tips for me? I don't know if it's worth the effort. I can't really spare the time. I must leave now. Farewell. You don't have any tips, do you? <laughs> Hello? The Sasha's not answering anymore. <laughs> it's you answering anyway. <laughs> of course you're not going to have the answers for yourself. Too bad you couldn't solve the murder. It's okay. I still had fun. Glad to hear it. Phew, that was exciting. My knees are still knocking. I think my acting needs a little more practice. <laughs> I'm gonna get going now. What about you guys? I'll stay here in the fresh air for a while longer. Billy, do you have a moment? Alright, get home safe then. Night night, crime busters. I didn't know it was about a murder. Sorry, I hope that wasn't too much for you. I really enjoyed it though. Without you, I probably wouldn't have come. Thanks for getting my mind off things. Finley, I don't know how you're feeling right now. I don't know what it's like when somebody dies on you for the first time. But I have to assume that that'll happen to me sometime too. And I'm pretty scared of it. Terrified, actually. But it's also part of the job. And a good doctor needs to be able to handle it. Hey, it might never happen to you. You're a great doctor. I think that's unrealistic. Hmm. But when it happens, I want to be ready. What are you thinking right now? Not much. All I want to do right now is sleep. And thank you for joining in. I wouldn't have had the nerves for it without you. Maybe you'll want to do it again in the future? But next time, I want to be the detective. I'd be honored to have you solve my murder. <laughs> Keeping going. Maybe that's what it's all about in the end. Moving on. I want to keep going too. With life here in Porcupine, I mean. I... I think I like it here. The people, the little streets. The hibernation festival was great. I think I could feel at home here. Especially with a partner in crime like you. Is she asking us out? Is there a thing going on between the two of them? Let's make sure that as few people die here as possible. That's the deal. Deal? Yes. Deal. <laughs> Maybe something is blossoming between the two of them. Boom, 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 boom. The song makes it sound like I'm sneaking into my own apartment. <laughs> I can't wait to get a good night's sleep. The only thing I'm going to be stealing are my own dreams. <laughs> How was that sound? Okay, well, maybe someone's outside. Or <laughs> maybe some kids are getting a little rowdy and playing with and doing a snowball fight. Who's to know? But we'll find that on the next episode. Right now, I'm going to end it right here. Um, it still was a little sad trying to get through it all. And that damn... What's his name again? I forgot. I don't I don't deal with him that often. So it's like easy for me to forget people's names just like that. But that that dog that's... Uh, that he's really infuriating. <laughs> I want to I wanna give him a good old one too. If you know what I mean. You know. <laughs> 
But honestly, he would just take take that and turn it around, saying like, "See, see, they're not really helpful. They're just liars." So, uh, I I was literally hoping that uh, that Guillermo would have actually stood up for us, you know. I mean, I understand his wife. I mean, not his wife. His mother died, and he wants to keep the peace. But I kind of wish he would at least told him to shut up and that it's not really his fault, you know, because it's not like we intentionally try to kill him, you know. It just happens. Um, anyway, like I said, I'll be leaving it off here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit that like. And if you really enjoyed it, by all means, hit that subscribe button. It'll help me a lot. And I'll see you in the next one, okay? Take care.